our fundamental understanding of astrodynamics starts with a deep analysis of the two-body problem. And this is because, as we will see shortly, the two-body problem is the only gravitationally bound system that has an exact analytical solution. As soon as you add a third body and any number of bodies past that that are interacting via forces of gravity, and as soon as you add any forces other than gravity, you start to lose the ability to write down an exact closed form solution of the trajectories of the system. And it turns out that a lot of long-term stable systems, including, for example, the solar system, behave like collections of two-body orbits that are being very, very gently modified in time. And so it is worth our while to analyze the two-body problem in great detail so that we can build up a physical intuition for how these systems evolve and behave before we go on to more complex topics. The two-body system is composed of two Newtonian point masses interacting via the force of gravity modeled by Newton's law of gravity. So we have point masses M1 and M2. They are the only masses in all of space, and the only force between them is the force of gravity. F1 is the force of gravity on M1 due to M2, and F2 is the force of gravity on M2 due to M1. And because of Newton's third law, these forces have to be equal and opposite, and so F1 is equal to negative F2. Newton's law of gravity tells us that the magnitude of these forces obeys an inverse square law. There's a constant of proportionality, which we call the gravitational constant G, and it's multiplied by the product of the two masses and then scaled by the distance between the two masses. So the norm of R1 rel2, or equivalently the norm of R2 rel1 squared. In this form, we are writing the denominator to the third power because this force acts in the direction of the separation vector. And so we have another term of R12 here, not normed, which cancels out one of these two magnitudes. You can either write this as inverse cubed times the vector separating the two masses, or you can write this as inverse squared and times the unit direction between the two masses. They're absolutely equivalent forms. If we define the orbital radius as the separation distance between the two masses, R1 rel2 or equivalently R2 rel1, and we define a gravitational parameter mu that is equal to the gravitational constant times the sum of the two masses, then we will get to a differential equation of this form. And this is the governing differential equation of the two-body problem. So how do we get from here to here? Well, we begin by considering the center of mass of the system, denoted on the diagram by the position vector rc rel o, where again, O is an inertially non-accelerating point or an inertially fixed point in some arbitrary inertial frame I that is itself not accelerating with respect to our system of these two masses. Recall that the center of mass is given by the mass weighted average position of all of the constituent parts of a multi-particle system. And so to find R C rel O, we can write R C rel O is equal to M1 times the position of the first mass plus M2 times the position of the second mass divided by the sum of the masses. We now proceed to apply Newton's second law to each one of these masses. And so we get the expressions. That is mass M1 times the second derivative of the position of mass M1 with respect to that inertially non accelerating point O is equal to the resultant force on mass M1, which is just F1. And the exact same thing holds true for mass M2. And we've already established that F2 is equal to negative F1 by Newton's third law. We can now rewrite both these expressions in terms of the center of mass. And when we do so, we get the following pair of expressions. where once again, we have two very similar forms now as functions of the position of the center of mass and the positions of both the particles with respect to that point O. And you see that via some algebraic simplification, we now have this new term M1, M2 over M1 plus M2. And we have already made the substitution of F2 being equal to negative F1. We can now add these two expressions together. And when we do so, the majority of these things cancel out. And all that we are left with is, and what this tells us is that the center of mass does not accelerate. And so the center of mass is itself an inertially non-accelerating point, 
which means that we can do all of our analysis of the system with respect to the center of mass and ignore any other external reference. This is a self-contained system. It contains only internal forces. And so we can analyze it in terms of just itself. Let's go back a step and look at one of these expressions and note that R1 rel O minus R2 rel O is equivalent in our notation to R1 rel 2. Since the second derivative of R C rel O is zero, both of these leading terms go away. And now if we subtract what remains instead of adding as we did before, what we end up with is the expression That is the product M1, M2 over the sum M1 plus M2, which is sometimes known as the reduced mass of the system, times the second derivative of the position of particle one with respect to particle two is equal to the force on particle one due to particle two, which by Newton's law of gravity is equal to negative the gravitational constant times the product of the masses over the distance between the particles squared in the direction of the separation radius between the two particles. If we furthermore, define this vector quantity as being just the vector r and rearrange things by moving this term to the left hand side and algebraically reducing things then we get to this differential equation this system is generalizable to n bodies where now instead of having just two bodies we have a collection of n newtonian particles all interacting via newton's law of gravity Again, there are no external forces in the system, and there's nothing else happening except for pure gravitational attraction, according to Newton's law of gravity. And in that case, we can once again apply Newton's second law to each particle individually. And what we will get is that the second derivative of the position of particle I with respect to some inertially non-accelerating point O will be equal to the negative of the gravitational constant times the sum of the gravitational effects of each of the other particles Mj in the collection. And so we sum over the law of gravity from j equals one to n, excluding j equal to i, which is zero by definition, a particle has no gravitational force on itself. We can similarly define the center of mass of this collection, which we will call g as the mass weighted ratio of the collection, or here mg is as before, the total sum of the masses in the collection. And just as with the two body system, the center of mass of the whole collection does not accelerate. And so the center of mass of the system, also known as the barycenter, is an inertially non-accelerating point.